Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, the second part of our two-part tech short series on uh, fluid dynamics CFD performance on the new C6I instances that have been released by, by AWS today. Um, uh, you'll in in the last in the last episode we covered OpenFoam and Star CCM performance, and you saw a lot of price uh, performance and 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 also per core and per instance uh, analysis that that Neil did. In today's episode, uh, we're going to be covering uh, Ansys Fluent performance, uh, and and in particular seeing some stuff that Nicola Venuti did. Uh, with you know comparing underpopulating the the nodes and seeing seeing how that impacted performance and of course also how it impacted the the price performance curves. I hope you get a lot out of this today. Results Thanks. will have some. Yeah, that no, makes sense. Now, uh, Nicola, real customers also use Ansys Fluent, and you know it's a, yep. it's another big popular code out there. You've done something particularly interesting in the, the analysis here. You've uh, compared this to some of the other data that Ansys themselves have published on their website right, right. using so, some on-prem comparisons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is uh, Ansys Fluent uh, 2021 release two, so the very latest one, running a pretty popular uh, public benchmark coming from Ansys, that is the Formula One racer car. It's a 140 million cell mesh, so a relatively big one. Basically what we did was to run exactly the same benchmark on our uh, C6i instance uh, and compare with the, the public result uh, published in the ANSYS um, website. Um, so, well, you, you can see there are three different um, data points for C6i because we wanted to um, try to figure out how much the memory bandwidth could affect the performance or how much we can improve the performance by uh, decreasing, let's say, the, the pressure in the memory bandwidth. The, the yellow line is C6i with full core, all fully populated. So 64 processes per instance. And uh, we are plotting the core, not the node, uh, and the solver rating, where ANSYS defined the solver rating has the number of seconds in a day, so 86,400, divided mm -hmm. by the, the time to complete the job. So this is actually the, 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 the number of jobs that you can run in a day, actually. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and well, you can see the, the, on one side, you can see the effect of uh, decreasing the number of processes per uh, instance. Uh, red is 48 core, uh, and uh, purple is uh, 32. Um, you so see the money's not here is that it just just by underpopulating the instance by turning some of the cores off, um, and only running the codes on some of the cores on the machine, yep. you're getting you're you're sharing that memory bandwidth across a smaller number of cores, and those That's cores right. are able to just get more work done because they're you know they're so greedy on memory bandwidth they're getting all the memory bandwidth they need ultimately and progressing Correct. at the pace that the CPUs can naturally get to. Yeah, correct. So, so the memory bandwidth is is fixed. Is per socket. It's it's just a eight lane per socket. And so, mm. if you use these lanes with sixty four processes, you get one one uh, one fraction of the bandwidth. If you use that with a, a lower amount of processes, like forty eight or thirty two, you get a, a a bigger chunk. And so, so well. well um, one last point from from the previous uh, plot uh, cha chart is that we are consistently faster than this on-prem system. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's a, it's an Intel. I believe it's a Cascade Lake uh, CPU uh, with the 96 physical core uh, with infinite band. Um, and we right. are always consistently faster um, than that. Um, and so again, that's you know that infinity band is going to be hundred gigabit infinity band, or is it even higher? Uh, I think it's two 
hundred. Uh, 200 gigabits. I, I, mean, I, can, I can check that, but I guess it's... Well, but yes, the lesson is clear. The lesson is clear. You know, the, yeah. the, the network bandwidth is not the bottleneck here in this particular case. Yeah. It's it's not even close to it. Um, yeah. CFD right. is greedy on memory bandwidth and it <laughs> kind of shows a lot. So what, what happens yeah. when you factor in the price? Because obviously, if you're going to want to populate the cores, you're going to have to run more nodes to to hit the scale that you may want to do. What's, what's that impact yeah. on price? Well, um, well, in this case, we, we are plotting um, the, the older generation C5N and the C6I. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we, of course, we cannot plot any on-prem system. But what you can see is that, well, one remarkable thing to highlight is that the price is very consistent. So you yep. increase the number of core, the, the cost per simulation is almost always the same. This means that we are scaling almost linearly. Really? Wow. Yeah, really, really That's good. Really nice. And you can also see that um, under populating the instances, the, the cost per job increase, but it doesn't increase proportionally to the number of instances because you are actually running faster. So part of the additional cost is decreased by the, the faster turnaround time. Hmm. Um, and uh, so, so, but, but on, on one side, you might believe, hey, it doesn't really make sense for me to run underpopulating the core because I will pay more money. But, but if you take into account also the license cost, the license of your the, the cost of, of mm -hmm. the license of the software that you are running, you might find out that underpopulating the 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 core, so using a lower amount of core but running much faster can be uh, effective. Uh, so it, it really depends on how your license your your software is licensed. Uh, of right. course, it does make depend sense on for, what those for license costs were for you because you yeah. know a lot of folks have got different arrangements with their ISVs yeah. for license prices. So. Yeah. So that's interesting. So we could uh, uh, we could we could potentially publish this data as a spreadsheet, could we not? And allow folks yep. to put their own license price in and and yep. do some of the you know the gaming of that. Yeah, um, we, we are considering yeah. uh, publishing a yet another uh, blog post uh, with um, focusing on on Ansys Fluent and showing the, these results as well. Um, by underpopulating the by underpopulating the nodes, you get faster performance. It's going to cost you a little bit more yeah. if you really underpopulate. It might cost you a little more. You may be getting better yield out of your licenses that you're that are probably costing you a lot more than the cores. By the way, yeah, that's right. Um, uh, cores are pretty cheap compared to the licenses. Is that right, Neil? Yeah, in, it does depend a little bit on the model, but typically we do find that people spend more money on licensing than they do on the compute. Um, yeah. But, you know, I would call out that, um, you know, things are changing from, you know, 10 years ago when it was almost exclusively done on a per core basis. Now, you know, codes like Siemens, SimCenter, Star CCM have what they call a power session. So essentially you pay for one license and you can run as many cores as you want. Yeah. There's no limit. Now that is perfect. It really allows those to take full advantage of the cloud because all they care about is just maximizing performance. It's nothing to do with per core performance. Yeah. It's essentially, you know, per node performance almost. Go get this code in the best possible instance, in the best possible environment with EFA and all the other things, all the other tricks that you want to yeah. throw at it, get it running as fast as possible, be as greedy as you can in terms of memory bandwidth, network performance, the whole lot. Um, and I suspect that, you know, that that trend will only continue. I think the whole industry is moving away from a per core basis because of you know the realization that it's not really the best metric to either license something or measure the performance so yeah well i mean well and, you, the, and, the, and, it's, and it's you know it, it used to be true that people would buy a, a cluster or keep it on prem and they would buy a bunch of cores and hold onto them for three or four years people are not doing that so much anymore right they're <laughs> they're they're renting cores by the hour on aws when they need them and then not when they don't Exactly. So, but it's good what Nicola showed. We have the flexibility. If you do mm. still need to maximize per core performance, you can do it. And hey, we even have, we don't show it here, you know, the fastest, um, 
Intel instance in the cloud, you know, the 4.5 gigahertz M5ZN. So if you really <laughs> want to maximize, you know, we even have, you know, have those and, and certain, you know, uh, non-CFD like EDA workloads, right. you know, love those. So, you know, there's right. an option for everything, right? And so, so like this, this really means that like taking out that license cost factorization there, it does mean that you can actually just decide that if you want to run jobs faster, you can underpopulate the nodes and get them run faster because you you need that answer today. And we've seen plenty of scenarios where that happens, right? We we talked to one of our one of our customers is is Amazon's Lab 126, who, you know, they do a lot of the they, they do all of the design and the construction of all of the gadgets. And I think did did everybody see the the Astro, the robot the other day that got launched? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I knew this was going to happen at some point in my lifetime, but I was just kind of weirded out that it happened this week. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little robot dog that follows you around the house. Um, um, that thing, you know, when when Lab 126 do their design meetings and they use a lot of CFD, they do use a lot of structures codes and, and so forth. When they do their design meetings, they often come back from a design meeting and, you know, the executives will have said to them, we want you to change x on the you know we want you to change the shape of the ears on the robot dog um or the or the the fabric on the outside of a of an amazon echo and they have to go back and do a redesign now they if they if they're using a fixed amount of of infrastructure you know that that redesign might take them a month to get all of the compute work done for that whereas you know typically what they do is they do it all over a weekend they, they kick all the jobs off on a Friday afternoon, go home and get the answer on Monday morning when they come back in and they're ready to tell the factories to change the, change the tooling. That's, that's, you know, paying a little bit more to get stuff a little bit sooner is often a worthwhile thing to do. Totally. I mean, yeah, the cost, what we always say is, you know, the cost of a, of a car being late into production is far more than the extra 10% you'd spend on some compute. So yeah, it's but for other people, it may be the other way around where they really want the cheapest possible simulation and it can take as long as they want. And this is why we show these graphs and we show these varying options so that people can pick right. the right instance for the right, you know, uh, need. It takes it takes decades to grow a new scientist or an engineer. Um, we want those scientists and engineers to be as productive as they possibly can be. Um uh, and and we need to need them to get to the end result sooner. CPUs are way cheaper than the cost of growing a new engineer or a new scientist, and they you know we can we can reproduce them much faster. <laughs> yeah. no, with, right. with C5n, you were paying additional money for for getting EFA and the, the 100 gigabit network. That's not the case with C6i. No, C6i, MC, you know, M6i. These are the examples of more or less what you're going to see this is going to be a repeating pattern. You're going to see EFA on most of our mainstream instances, um, and you can just assume it's going to be there. And whether there's 100 gigabits bandwidth attached to it, or it's 30, or it's 50, actually evaluate that in the context of your code. Don't evaluate it from a point of view of a micro benchmark, because as we've yep. seen today, actual real codes running just fine. I'm going to say that if anybody out there has got ideas that they want to see us talk about in future tech shorts or if there's areas that they want us to dig into, please get in touch. Uh, our DMs are open and we're all ears. Nicola, Neil, thank you. Thanks. For Thanks. Cheers, Booth. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.